Okay, awesome. So now we can go actually to the index view on our home page. So let's head over into our views and then go to home and look at index. So we've got this default index that's kind of set up for us, but I would like to start making things look a little bit nicer in our application um, since we already have some of the base functionality set up. So let's go ahead and do that now. So the first thing we're going to do is actually just delete everything that is in here. And even though our view is going to look a lot nicer, it's also going to be a lot more simplistic in terms of markup. So we'll pass in our view model, which should be pretty familiar by now. And we're going to use Bootstrap, more or less, throughout this application. So we'll have a div class of container and body content here. This is going to wrap everything on our home index view. I'm going to have a class row with front page splash class that we'll need to write. And then we'll have a single column here. And then inside here we'll have a heading, so we'll have a div class, we'll call it front page heading, and we'll have some heading for application, so in this case I'll say learn, collaborate, share knowledge. You know, feel free to put whatever you like in your particular application, this is just going to be for um, the one that I'm building. And then I'll put a paragraph tag with a class of front page subheading. And we'll say Lambda Forums is the world's fastest growing coding forum. Alright, so some decent marketing speak up there at the top of the page. And then we'll have another div um, actually for our search form. So we won't worry about actually wiring up the functionality yet. We just kind of want to get it up there and we'll address it as soon as the, uh, the page is looking halfway decent here. Um, we, will, we will just use the expected controller and uh, controller actions that we need to actually wire up this form though. So we know we'll have a search controller with an action of search in it. You could also put the search action right in your home controller but I like to keep it separate since it might be a functionality that we could reuse elsewhere. And we'll have an input ASP for our search query. Type text. And we'll give this a class of maybe home search that we'll write some CSS for. And we'll have a placeholder value of search. Okay, so that's our simple form. Go ahead and uh, have those divs closed off. And then for now, I'll just have an empty column to take up the rest of the space there. So just some standard bootstrap stuff here. Okay, so that's our first row. That's kind of the splash. We're gonna have some type of image And then I'll have a second row here, which will contain, um, we'll call it our front page content. And this is where we'll display these latest posts. So I'll give this heading three an ID of latest posts. And we'll say latest posts here. Table class, table, table hover. With an ID of latest posts table. And yeah, we'll just tuck all the latest posts into another simple um, bootstrap styled HTML table here. So as usual, we'll simply forego the T head and just use a simple T body here and then use Razor to iterate through each of the posts in our post listing collection. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to put some divs in each of these data cells in order to kind of format 
this table a little bit more nicely than just kind of a standard table that you might see um, just in a simple list view. So we'll have a div for the forum logo. And we'll do some inline styling here so that we can actually apply the forum image URL dynamically. And we'll make sure that those are square images that get uploaded and we'll set our CSS uh, forum logo class to be a particular square width and height and then we'll just have this sort of trick of background size of 100% to fill that square div with the uh, square image. Okay, and now we'll go ahead and now we'll go ahead and have a div that contains the post title, and we'll wrap that post title in a link to actually visit that post, which is again the uh, post controller index action and the route ID will obviously be the post ID okay and the post title is oops okay and the post title is at post dot title and then I'm going to create another div here for the post subtitle And this is where we'll display like the number of replies and the user who posted it. Um, so the first thing we can do is we can say if the post replies count is equal to one, then we'll create a span here. Oops, span, not spam. And we'll say at post.replies count replies. So that way it'll say one reply. And then we'll say if the post replies count is zero and we can actually just say no replies otherwise we'll say else I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this span and then we'll have plural replies all right looking good now we'll have uh, the user who posted it so we'll have a class of post user with a ASP controller profile. We'll build a user profile controller here in just a bit. And we'll have a detail action on the profile controller to actually take us over to uh, the user's profile. And then in this way, we can pass a route ID of the um, post author ID to that controller action once it's built. And that link should exist on a post author. And then we can go ahead and close the anchor tag there. And sorry, that is a post author name, of course. All right, so let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. I'm going to uh, bring the anchor tag down one level here. Okay, so there's our link to a user profile, which of course we have yet to build. And yeah, I'm gonna call that as our basic home page. Now we ha obviously haven't applied these custom stylings yet, um, but let's go ahead and start the server and see if we get any errors. Okay, we're, saying, we're seeing an error that says a suitable constructor for the home controller could not be found. Um, and that's because I believe We'll go ahead and stop the server. Um, when Visual Studio creates a constructor by default, it creates it as protected. And this, of course, needs to be public for us to be able to use it. So we'll do that and go ahead and start the server again and see what we get. Okay, so now we're getting a not implemented exception on our get all method in our post service. So let's go ahead and fill that one out. We'll go ahead and close this here. And you know, we could have avoided most of these service layer not implementing exceptions by um, implementing them immediately at the start of the project. Um, but I thought that that would be pretty boring if we went through and did um, all of them right up front. And besides, in this way, we're actually getting to see which of the methods we're actually going to be requiring 
in order to build out the basic features for our application. So we kind of came up with the idea for all these methods up front. And um, yeah, we're just writing the implementations as we need them. So doesn't seem to be too much wrong with that.